and thank you, Ezekiel, for your beautiful introduction, as, as always, the prelude to our service of worship from home each Sunday, and we're so glad to see you. That's a great angle. We're actually here inside. If you were with us also for our early service, Nikki's got a step over the dog every time she walks that way. And uh, But if you were there also for our, our early service this morning, you saw that we are uh, in our living room here sitting in front of our wood stove this morning because we uh, have a, a record low temperatures. Mm -hmm. I think I hear this is a record low temperature Valentine's for us for Valentine's Day here in Denver, Colorado. It was negative seven when we did our early service this morning. And what's more, uh, if you've heard, we don't have a furnace. I think this is our fourth day without a furnace and without hot water. I, isn't that ironic? But uh, we are making do. I was saying to our prayer group this morning that it's almost, for me, it's almost kind of fun, you know, to be camping, you know, over these these few days. But uh, uh, in any case, are we blessed? We, we're giving thanks for our fireplace, for our wood stove. Uh, we are staying warm even under the circumstances, and we hope that you are too. But it's just so great that we can worship here together and uh, that uh, we uh, have this technology to keep us connected. And we're going to get started. Um, you'll get to enjoy the, the fireplace, and we've got some, uh, some worship songs and a message for you this morning. And uh, Nikki's got a message for the children. Get your communion elements ready. <coughs> we'll pray for Nikki's cough. Uh, but Nikki has a um, Nikki has a, a prayer as we get started. So Nikki will lead us in prayer as we start this worship today. Let us join our hearts and our minds across the miles. God of love and laughter, God of grace and forgiveness, we come into your presence this morning, O oh God, and we are ever so excited and full of joy to sing your praises and to hear where you are speaking to our hearts this day. O oh God, we give you all thanks and praise for our many blessings and for all the great things in our life. And O oh God, we offer unto you those things that distract us from your love, that distract us from your grace. We offer unto you our, our worries and our fears, our resentments and our distractions. O oh God, our grief and our heartache. God, take these things and bless them and mold them and blow them back into our life, O oh God, and help us to see the praises and the blessings that abound. God, we are so excited to worship you this morning. May all we do say, sing, and thank be pleasing unto you, O God. For it's in your precious name we pray this day and every day. Amen. 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 We do have kind of a tight squeeze here in, in front of the fireplace. We, we normally have the kids to come up, and great to see some people join us, but let's we'll <coughs> see if the kids could come around and and gather around as we sing this song. It's a, it is. It's a very tight squeeze. Ezekiel, come in and squeeze in behind me. Watch out for your heart. We'll see if we can see their little faces. And, but we're going to sing. We're going to get started by our first song this morning. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger, okay? Here we go. I'm just a poor Barren stranger traveling through this world of woe, but there's no sickness, no toil or danger in that bright world to which I go. I'm going there. going over home. Let's sing that again. I know dark clouds will gather around me. I know my way is rough and steep, but golden fields lay just before me where God's redeemed i 
I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I'm just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going over home. Amen. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger. Some of us remember that movie. Or that from a movie um, from Miss Beam seems like a long time back um, about the um, uh, about uh, well that's our part of our American tradition isn't it poor wearing wayfaring stranger but this is also Valentine's Day February fourteenth and Nikki's got a message for uh, the kids for Valentine's Day so come around uh, Eden's going to help out Nikki with the message but other children come around and message just for the children right now. Come on up, Eden. And if there's other kids out there, come join around. We'd love to have you join us. And as Pastor Canaan said, today is a holiday. What is today? Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day, right? And so I brought, we've gotten, this is a different Valentine's Day, right? For you, especially, because typically you're at school. And so you take Valentine's for what? What do you normally do? I take Valentine's normally for my class and other people, um, have Valentine's for everyone else at school. Right, at school, right. Yeah, so this year you're doing school from home, right? But we have gotten a couple Valentines from friends. So we got this sweet Valentine's. This was to you um, from a friend. And we got this great Valentine from a friend in the church. And you got this really awesome homemade Valentine. It's quilted. Can you believe that? Um for also in the mail. And so you've gotten some Valentines, right? And why do we give people a Valentine? Do you know? Um, why do we give it to them? Why would you give someone a card? Oh, oh to be nice. <laughs> to be nice, that's right. To let them to say thank you. Thank you for being my friend. I just want to let you know that I love you. I just want you to know that you're special to me, right? And so sometimes we think about Valentine's Day being about um, maybe a husband and a wife or a family sharing love or um, sometimes we think about grandparents but Valentine's Day is a day to, sh to share our love with everybody and really truthfully we should be sharing our love on all the days of the year but Valentine's Day is one day a year that we set aside to make sure we tell people we love them but do you know that as I was thinking about this I started thinking about the Bible and so as I was opening the Bible, look at this. Look at what fell out. I'm going to see if I can do this, and we may make a mess. Okay, ready? Watch. Look at what is inside of my Bible. Can you guys see? What is falling out of my Bible? What just fell out of my Bible? You know what they are? These are like Valentines from God. Do you know this one right here? Psalm 136 says, Give thanks to God of heaven. His love endures forever. Or what about this one? 1 John 4, 16. And so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I want to do one more. There's 1 John 9. It says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Do you know in our Bible, we can find daily Valentines from God? Because not only do we give one another a valentine to say here's a card to make sure you know i love you or a phone call to say i'm just thinking about you i care about you all throughout the bible all throughout the bible this is a whole book that talks about god's love god's love for us god's love for our neighbor how we're supposed to if we love god then we're supposed to love one another and here's the hard one we're also called to love those that are difficult for us to love. And so I wanted us to think about this Valentine's Day that yes, we give Valentines to one another and to our friends and to those that we care about, but I wanted us to remember that God also gave us so many Valentines, so many moments of love throughout this book. And so I'm going to close on my most favorite 
for, oh no, I lost my most favorite, but thankfully I know it by heart. So one that we know that we can often we memorize as we get older, it says it's from John 3, 16, and it says, for God so loved the world. Do you know if God so loved the world, do you know that includes you and me? It includes everybody watching, no matter where they live, because God so loved the world that God sent his only son that we may have eternal life. And so I hope that this Valentine's Day and every day, we can remember that God loves us so much. And if we ever forget, we just have to open up this book, this Bible, and we'll find all kinds of messages from God to remind us how much God loves us. So let us have a prayer. God, we thank you for these children gathered here and for the children around the world. God, we thank you so much that you love us so much on our good days and our bad days, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus Christ to be with us in eternity. Lord, we ask that you be with us and you continue to pour your love into us and help us to love one another. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I like those little cats on your dress, Eden. How very cute. And uh, Eden was wearing a sweater in here because it's... Well, this actually is not that It's cold. really it's hot actually... right here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we're making do. I've had a number of people reach out... Uh, to say, well, how are you? How are you doing in this cold weather? And uh, we're just we're doing really well. I was I was joking. I said I am, you know, it's it's good to be country because you know how to uh, make do uh, with heat uh, when your furnace goes out. So that's what we've been doing here in Denver. But uh, great to see all of you. And we've come now to the time of prayer, and we're going to lift up our prayer this morning. And uh, just know our hearts go out to so many people out there in the world. Um, and especially this week, I saw in our prayer meeting this morning, our friend Shane, whose stepmother passed away suddenly this past week. And uh, his dad, Dennis, and his brother and sister, and all their extended family. So just know that we pray for, for Shane and for Dennis and, and for all the family and the passing of Colleen uh, suddenly this past week. And uh, we'll have a memorial service for her and we do have a number that are also in our, our prayer concerns. We try not to mention all these prayer concerns by name because we don't want to leave anybody uh, out. But just please do know that we pray for you and reach out to us and uh, see how we could be of help and see if we can, can uh, lift up a prayer for you. Uh, Nikki, is there something, anything that we want to make mention of? Well, I just wanted to say um, today is also our friend Boyd's birthday. So I just wanted to say happy birthday to Boyd, I know he doesn't like the public acknowledgement, but I just wanted to say happy birthday. Yeah, absolutely, and, and happy Valentine's Day. Um, and also, uh, be, be stay warm out there. We're not the only ones we've heard. It seems like when it gets cold, a lot of people's uh, furnaces go out. So we know a lot of people uh, right now um, are, are bearing this extraordinary cold. Also, we hear from friends uh, back east, you know, how the, the cold is and the snow is uh, very unusual. But just know we pray for you. Well, let's uh, give these things to God in prayer. We're going to lift up these things and uh, go to God uh, in prayer at this time. Let's pray. And God, we just trust in you, and we call on your name. And God, we know that we are richly blessed, and uh, we ask that we might count our, our blessings as innumerable as the stars in the sky. God, we, we trust that you'll give us grateful hearts. God, that you'll help us to be people of, of gratitude. And God, if, uh, if, if we have time to worry, we have time to pray. So God, help us to turn all these things over to you. God, help us not to have, have complaints on our lips, but to give you all thanks and praise. And God, we do trust in you. And we give you thanks for the, the changing of the seasons. God, for the moisture. Um, we give you thanks for uh, the heat um, that keeps us warm, that uh, we remember the, the, uh, what we have to eat, God, that the, that the sun rises each day, God, that it's getting warmer, God, that this might be a, a dark winter, but we do know that, that the spring is coming. God, so many things that we can trust in you, that we don't have to um, control these things, but we can trust in you and in your plan and in your purpose for our lives. And God, we do ask your blessing upon 
Shane and, and Dennis and, and their family and the loss of, of Carl, Colleen, unexpected, uh, too young, just help them to know that we surround them with our love and all their family. Um, God, we do pray on this uh, Valentine's Day that this can be a chance where we can extend our love to one another as we are called to do each day. For as you teach us, uh, God is love, God. And so if we have not love, then um, what are we doing, God, as your scripture says? But love is, is the answer. How do we extend love and, and compassion to one another, even when we don't agree with one another? God, this is a hurting world and a lot of, of, of hardship. And God, we do trust that you um, are drawing us together, that you're, you're reconciling us, that you have all power and strength. Everything that we need, God, comes from you. So God, help us to, to seek you in all that we do and to seek your strength in all things. God, help us not to get distracted by the things of this world by the false promises, but just to trust in you and in your plan and purpose for our lives. And God, we do ask your blessing on each one in Jesus' name. Now hear us as we pray, even as your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those debtors, who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. And um, so we do have a lesson for us today, and it's great to see, uh, there's Debbie saying good morning. Good morning, Debbie. And great to see people chime in. Go ahead and chime in on the screen. Uh, we'll have a lot of people watching this service after the fact, even in different time zones. But it's great to see the ones who are, are watching us right now in real time. And uh, it's great that we can have a little back and forth. And uh, But we have a lesson this morning. Ezekiel also read this lesson. That's the prescribed lesson for this day. Um, and uh, this is, wait a second, where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the messages Nikki had from God. But this is the lesson that we have for this day. It's from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 4. Hear now the word of the Lord beginning in verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 through 5 where the scripture says, Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God this day that we do not proclaim ourselves or, or people confused in the world, but our message is not about we ourselves, but about the living God, that we know the Creator God, that we know in Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. So we're not pointing to a worldly outcome, you know, that, that we, lest, lest we be misunderstood. But the Scripture says that, that that message is veiled to those that are perishing. Why? Because they are distracted by the gods of this world. So I, this is, I love this message. That means it says that our message is just like what Jesus says. My kingdom is not of this world. We serve a higher authority. And I love that message because it's a message of unity. It's a message of, of reconciliation. It's a message, I think, that rises above all of the division um, that we have here in this world. Well, and I think it also says um, where it talks about, where's the end of it that you read? It says we are... And we ourselves as your servants for Jesus. Right, sake. where it says it's mm -hmm. not about us, mm -hmm. you know. And I think what that means is sometimes we get so caught up in our own worries, our own fears, our own insecurities, and we start thinking that that's the truth. You know, we start thinking, you know, we can only see through our own vision, you know. And sometimes when when we start feeling overwhelmed, you know, it starts being more about what's going on in our own heads and you know, our worries and insecurities and less about 
turning to God and listening for God's voice. And so what I heard when you were reading the scripture, what it was saying to me was, you know, every time you start making it about you, realize that's not right. You know, that what we should be talking about, what we should be focused on is sharing God's love with others and remembering our salvation comes through Jesus Christ, not by our own worries and insecurities, um, self-righteousness or any of that. And so I think anytime we start feeling separated from God, we might have to realize that we're starting to make this about us, as it says. It's not about you, you know, it's about Jesus Christ. Well, or, you know, I think maybe a flag for that could be fear. You know, if we're mm -hmm. in fear, um, you know, I think a lot of people we've seen, you know, there's always in, in, in the news, you know, there's, there's always all of these upheavals, you know, there's mm -hmm. always, it's almost like every week, well, what's going to be the next upheaval? What's going to be the next um, uh, flashpoint, you know, the next outrage? And, you know, we can be free of that. I think, though, that people misunderstand us when we, you know, when we, we say, well, we're, we want to, to share a message, the messages in the world are all about fighting. You know, the messages out in the world are about, well, my team or this team. You know, there is the Super Bowl. Well, which team is going <laughs> to win, right? But the message of, of Jesus, the message of God is not about fighting, right? The message of God is a, is a message for all people. But because this world is so much about fighting, I think people can misunderstand. That's why the scripture says the gospel is veiled to those who are following the gods of this world. Well, and sometimes I think, though, that we can, we get distracted because we think that, you know, our anger, you know, becomes what God is telling us, you know, or our self-righteousness, we think, well, you know, if everyone else just thought like me, you know, or if everyone else, you know, and what this says is, you know, it's not really about our opinions, you know, it's not about, you know, it's not about that, you know, what it's about is that God has done something amazing and continues to do something amazing in this world and in our individual lives and in the life of our community and every time that we get distracted you know or we get caught up in our own you know battle of the mind our own worries and fears then we miss out on sharing what's most important you know we miss out on a real opportunity for um, holiness you know which is connection between one another not battling one another and so I see this scripture is saying, you know, stop making it about you. You know, remember, this is about Jesus Christ, you know, and Jesus came for everyone, you know, and Jesus came to say, you know, you guys are all off track. You know, it's about God, God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's mercy. And all we have are blessings. Well, and that's where I think, you know, in this world, um, you know, there's, I, th I think people can be so angry and think that the only necessary outcome is the destruction of people who are different right. than they are. And so, you know, you hear so much of that rhetoric. It's, it's very, very hateful, and it almost wants to suggest, it demonizes the other, and it almost suggests, you know, for me to lift myself up in this world, I've got to push somebody else down. And so that's what I want to point to. I think if we're, if, if, if we're speaking in the way of the world, you know, there's so much conflict that people are so often misunderstood. And that's where I was saying that the Bible study this morning, I'm so grateful to have a different role, a different purpose, to try to point to a hope beyond this world. You know, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, mm -hmm. right? Lest, they be mis mis lest he be misunderstood. But what does that mean? It means that I don't need to push this one down in order to lift this one up. No, God has a message that transcends all of these conflicts. And so, and I think that's, you're right. I think we bring it back to us and what is our role and our responsibility. Well, it's not to promote ourselves or our cause. It's not to promote our platform or our politics. It's not to promote our candidate. It's to promote the, the promises of God, which mm -hmm. transcend all of those questions. It transcends all nations. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I've heard it said before, you know, if, if, if you, if you believe that God hates all the same people you do, you got it wrong, you know, and I think, I think sometimes we start thinking, well, if, if I hate this, then God hates this too, you know, or if I'm opposed to this, God is opposed to this also, and what we have to realize is the scripture very clearly says, God is love, you know, God is love, and God so loved the world, everyone, 
people we like and people we don't like, that God sent Jesus Christ so that we all may have eternal life. And I think that, you know, to bring it back around to Valentine's Day, which I wasn't even thinking about really, is that ultimately what it comes down to is we're called to love, not judge. We're called to love, not hate. You know, we're called to love and share this message of God's love with others, not to stand in judgment um, over others. And I think that that's what I mean by I say every time we go and make it about us, I think we kind of push God out. And to me, that's, you know, sin. So, Well, and I do think also if we're in fear, mm -hmm. um, then we're not trusting God's plan and God's purpose. And mm -hmm. so I think that's where when there's all types of rancor and division and ugliness and name calling in the world, um, you know, we can actually transcend that mm -hmm. because we don't have to, you know, our hope does not end with the earthly outcome. You know, our hope is a hope beyond hope. And that's the good news, you know. Well, and there's a song that says, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, you know, and it's not by our divisions or by our hatred or, you know, it's by our love, you know. Well, you're not going to, yeah, exactly. So do we believe, you know, do we believe in God or do we not? You know, if we believe, if we believe in God, then we can have a confidence. Uh, mm -hmm. We can have a confidence even when things don't seem to be going our way, <laughs> you know, and doesn't that make all the difference? So I think it's really a great message. And I think it's a great message for Valentine's Day to say our heart doesn't need to be satisfied by some kind of circumstance, right? We can, our heart can be satisfied by what God's trying to give to us because <laughs> God can live in our hearts, right? And God is love, amen. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot here. There's a lot here. Aren't we blessed? Like Nikki said, you know, this is a love message from God. It's a love message from God. And it's a, it's a prescription for what ails us. Amen. So let's uh, sing a song as we respond to the message today. And I like this song. You know, I don't know. Maybe we can think of my, my hope is people will say, well, why does, you know, why did we have this message? Why did we have these songs on a day like, like Valentine's Day? And well, I'm, I, I think I'm trying to share a message here. Come on, uh, Ezekiel, come and sing with us. I'm trying to share a, a message here that says, um, if you need me to uh, create a space for you, I can. But um, I'm trying to create, share, share a message here that says, um, you know, this is not about what I think I need from, you know, somebody else or, you know, I don't, you know, something out there in the world. No, this is, this is about me and God. This is about me and God, and and the, um, the 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 song "Just as I Am" without one plea. Just as I am. sneak in there uh, from the back. But uh, aren't we blessed that we have this faith and that we have this, um, that we can rely on regardless of, of uh, whether it's cold or, or warm or, or who's in charge? Because <laughs> who's really in charge, you know? That's what we can trust. And Nikki's going to uh, share the message as we approach this table, which is the main event of our time in worship. 
So if you haven't yet had the opportunity to gather your elements for communion, you can do so now. Um, we're using graham crackers and milk, but you are welcome to use whatever you have um, available at your house. What's most important is that we come and that we take together. So I was thinking, I had a whole communion meditation planned out um, around a different song, and then as we were just singing Just As I Am, these words really jumped out at me as I was thinking about why, how and why do we come to this table? There's so much in the world that we kind of have to put on a fake facade or sometimes, you know, a fake smile or um, different things, or we feel like we have to be one person or another in so many different circles. And yet this table, we're invited to come just as we are, as the person God created us to be in whatever moment we're experiencing life right now. Um, the words that really jumped out were, just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. For that is how I feel right now, to be honest. I feel kind of tossed about. I feel like I got some fears within and without that I'm, you know, battling. And, and so where I turn is I turn to God. You know, I turn to the Bible and I turn to trusted, faithful friends, you know, who remind me of God's love because they remind me of their love. And we come to this table just as we are. We come, if, if today's a great day, you're invited to this table just as you are. If today you are struggling, just struggling to have a smile or a positive thought, you too are welcome at this table. God can take our hearts and transform them and bless them as long as we're open to the experience along the way. So come to this table today just as you are, with your thoughts tossed about, with your heart in conflict, with doubts in your mind, with fears and feelings within and without. Come to this table just as you are. For God has created you, God has blessed you, and God loves you more than we can ever imagine. So come to the table today, my friends. Come and experience the greatest love, the love of true acceptance, the love of true forgiveness. Come to the table, my friends. God is here and ready to celebrate with you. Amen. You know, thank you, Nikki. And you know, we do have this sacred meal, which is at the center of our time of worship. And aren't we blessed that we know in our family of faith that uh, we don't have to have a, a special type of wafer or a special type of juice, but we can use, God gives us the uh, ability to go directly that we can use whatever elements and these are, are consecrated elements even the, the graham cracker and the milk aren't we blessed and that we can provide these for ourselves this is freedom freedom in Christ and we do remember that it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he first took the bread and the scripture teaches how he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Then likewise, the, the scripture teaches us how Jesus took the bread, took the cup. It says it was after supper that he, he took it there in the upper room with his disciples and he shared it with them saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Take this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God this day and always. Amen. Nikki, this is the body of Christ broken for you, the, the cup of new life, Christ's blood shed for you. Canaan, this is the body of Christ broken for you and the cup of God's love poured out for you. Eat in the body of Christ and the cup of new life for you. Amen. Amen. And this is also for each and every one, not by what we've done, but by what's been done for us in Jesus Christ. The body of Christ broken, the cup of Christ poured out for you. 
thanks be to God this day and always. Amen. 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 I'm so glad we have. We don't need a, a special cup, but I'm glad this is something. You've had this since your ordination, haven't mm -hmm. you? And just something that we have here. And here I'll show off. We're using our Ezekiel plate. <laughs> <laughs> we often use this plate because it kind of matches our cup here in any case. But aren't we blessed? We don't need a special plate or, or, or cup, but um, so grateful that we can be together and, and share in this message and share in the service and uh uh, just know that we love you. We love you. That's what this is about. We we love you. We are a family of faith, and it's great to see people. I was talking with some friends just this past week, and they say, yeah, we watch you every Sunday, and I'm like, I didn't even know y'all were on here every Sunday, So, but it's just great uh, that we can join, and even in the, the circumstances, and great to hear from Sarah in Florida. Oh, and we want to pray, um, you know, Brent's uh, brother Roy passed this week, and we do want to lift up Roy and their family, and that's been on my heart um, all this week, and we know that he's in a better place. So our love goes out to, to Brent and Sarah, also in this time of loss. But let's go out on this, you know, again, this is how we've got to do it. we got to take it one day at a time. So let's sing this together. I'm only human, I'm just a man. Help me believe in what I could be and all that I am. Show me the stairway I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, help me to take one day at a time. One day at a time. One day at a time. That's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Worse now than then, pushing and shoving, crowd in my mind. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. Last time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way, one day at a time. Lord, help me today. Show me the way, one day at a time. Amen. And there good message even in that song we got to handle it in as we say in 24-hour compartments one day at a time and we're only given this one day we give thanks to god for for all good gifts stay warm out there great to see everybody um and we're going to go out with a benediction then ezekiel's got something on the harp i think we've got a family fellowship tonight at seven o'clock Lots of chances to connect, so uh, just check out our website. Oh, also, don't forget, one of our, our uh, Paul uh, asked me to remind you, it's Wednesday at noon, Ash Wednesday on this same channel. A Wednesday at noon, we'll have an Ash Wednesday service this week. Um, so let's go out on the benediction, and we'll, we'll see you later on. Uh, let's pray. Now, um, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all through Jesus Christ, our Lord, this day and always. Amen.